I think it's so refreshing for me to hear an English lady talking about their own terroir, about their own country, about uh, the, your own heritage, about your own food, and cooking them as well. I'm the happiest man on earth at the moment. I, I want my children to experience yeah. that as yeah. well. It's for future generations. Because our children won't see those orchards tomorrow if everything goes on the way it is going. Mm. Okay, even if one have those, those orchards, and that would be a sad day. It might be small scale, but Lucy's innovation is using plums that might otherwise have wasted away in the orchard. Raymond, would you like to get me the, the glass jug and we'll, oh, we'll get yes, a, chef. A, a mixture ready? Yes, chef, of course. The plum juice is strained and mixed with some sweet elderflower and water. Then it is ready to taste. For the plums, to live forever in Iversham. Here, Shall here. We? Yay! Santé! Santé! Voilà! Voilà! voilà. <laughs> <laughs> I'm truly inspired meeting Lucy and her family. Using her local plums, I want to share with you one of my own family recipes. From time immemorial, the pig, and particularly pork, has been associated with plums in every single world culture because it makes sense. It's a perfect communion. The dish I'm about to do is a roast sirloin of pork stuffed with dried plums. The plum we're going to do is actually a Victoria plum. What I'm going to do now is to dry them, half dry them, so to remove some of the moisture, to concentrate the texture, to concentrate the flavor, to give that pig a serious, glorious day, okay? Stone the plums and place them in the oven on a very low heat. It's, it's a fantastic little trick because you can do so many things dried, so many fruits, uh, apples, pears, all sorts of incredible food, okay, which gives a totally different new dish, new ideas. After two hours, we have created a whole new ingredient. And what has happened here, you notice know, they're discolored, they're a bit dry, it's normal, okay? And the texture becomes quite much more chewy, much more firm. And that's what you have, and that's what we want. It's exactly what we want. As well as if I was stuffing this pork with fresh plums, it would be a disaster, really. okay? Create a pocket in the meat for your dried plums. It's very much a builder's job. It's nothing to do with cooking. Very simple. That's a very old dish from my mum. Okay, that's really a classic from Maman Blanc. Definitely uh, for a long time, actually. And I, I had the pork, but of course the French would use a different plum. They would use Pruno d'Agen because of course the French use their plums. They use their orchards. Secure the meat and sold the fat before heating all in a pan to sear it. Voilà, you can hear a very lovely searing. It's not too strong, it's not spitting away. The fat is not burning your house, okay? As the joint is sealed, prepare a baking tray. I'm using brown pork bones, just as my mother showed me. So the heat just travels nicely around, beautifully around. Equally, that creates a fantastic jus, naturally, just with a bit of water. Rest the meat on the bones and cook the sirloin in a hot oven for 30 minutes. Then, turn down the temperature and add water for the gravy. When the joint is cooked, leave it to rest for a further half an hour. So whilst it's resting, the temperature, the heat is dynamic. It's got a proper energy. The cooking goes on. I am adding some dried plums to the sauce before I carve this wonderful joint. The smell is quite amazing. Remember, that's one very old dish from my family. Yes, I hope you really enjoy it. That is delicious. Either the pork is extraordinary, or maybe I'm a very good cook. I don't know. Tell me. Just eight miles west of Evesham is a town of Persho, 
and that's exactly where I'm going now. Pershaw has a long connection with plums, and my first stop is at one of the oldest orchards in the area. I'm meeting John Edgley from the Vale Landscape Heritage Trust. What a beautiful old tree. They look as old as me. What kind of orchard it is. This is very much an orchard that is here to preserve wildlife but act as a gene bank for the old varieties of plums. We don't use any herbicides or sprays. We allow the grass to grow long and we, we cut it down just before um, harvest. Mm -hmm. See, there's a lot of dead wood in the trees yeah. and that in turn encourages the very rare noble chafer. Mm -hmm. And this area is one of the areas where you'll find the noble chafer. Noble chafers are tiny green beetles. Just like the orchards, they are on the brink of extinction. Traditional orchards are not the only way plums can teach us about our past. Another interesting aspect of plums that is. is that the stones are peculiar to the variety, so they're like a fingerprint. When the Mary Rose was raised from the Solent, um, they used the national collection, mm -hmm. and so they're able to identify the 500 stones that were brought up, which included Mirabelle's, your favourite. Mm -hmm. and uh, One of my favourites. I love Victoria oh, yeah. as well, I remember, OK? <laughs> but, but other um, plums that are around at the time of Henry VIII. Yes. So they're able to identify them by using the stone yeah. collection. Yes, because what we forget about is, of course, an orchard. It's not just about food. It's not just it's about one's heritage. It's history as well. Very much so. And, yeah. and of course, people in the Vale of Evesham, they expect to be able to drive around yeah. here and see orchards. And early in the spring, when we have the blossom, then we have people coming from far afield just to go on the blossom trail mm. that mm. we maintain around the Vale. I still believe how we use plums is key to any revival. I'm heading to the centre of Persho, where a local butcher is making the most of his regional crop. I'm uh, just looking for Ken. Where is Ken? Where is he hiding? I'll go and get him for you. Thank you very much. Putting plums in anything he can, Ken Tallis is truly celebrating Persho plums. Ah, Ken. Raymond, Pleased um, to meet you, sir. Pleased to meet you. I know you are championing the plums, Pershaw. Absolutely right. How? Oh. How uh, we've made Pershaw pork pies, we've made Pershaw sausage, in which we use Pershaw plums. Would you want, like to come round and try I a would bit? love to try, OK? OK. okay. The magic ingredient in Ken's plummy products is that famous Pershaw plum sauce. We've taken the plums from Pershaw, we've exactly. taken the spring onions from the Vale of Eversham, and what we've done, we've stewed it down, a bit of spice, a secret ingredient, which I'm not uh, going to tell you. I would bloody tell you. Uh, OK, you all know. And then we've stewed it all down, and we've got this lovely this mixture now. Lovely I want to mixture. find the special ingredient. OK. I know what it is. Easy. Go love. On. Lots of love. <laughs> eh? Lots of love, lots of passion. We're making the Persho pork pie. We're mixing the plum sauce with some minced pork shoulder. Yeah, that's absolutely perfect. So, a, a little question for you. I don't yep. understand. If I was you, mm -hmm. let's see, I mean, I'm going to, you're going to throw me out of your right, okay. shop. Okay. I would add some beautiful dried plums. Yeah. To have that lovely, sweet, chunky texture as well. And again, you have more. We could, yeah. That's a good. We can try that. We can try that. So we're always open to new ideas. Mm -hmm. I may speak with a French accent, but I can make pies with the best of them. Yours Practice is a makes perfect. 10 out of 10. <laughs> it's a bit dodgy, okay? No, it's not too bad. It's, it's like not a French. Well, yeah. I'll show you. Okay? I'm a very competitive <laughs> man, don't you dare, okay? I didn't start. Yeah. That's not too bad. Is it? Not too bad. He's such a, he's such a, mean, he's a bad loser as well. <laughs> That's ten times better. The pies are ready for the oven, and I can't wait to trust his regional delicacy. Try that. Yeah. Oh, lovely. Very good. Yeah. What you are doing here, this really is the very best way to revive an industry, revive a craft. You are using plums in so many ways. What you're doing is fabulous. So, bravo. Please. It keeps everything local, it's regenerating yep. the yep. plum industry yep. Yep. and it's regenerating rural crops. But I would like to see those dried plums in here, I okay? Think so I'll can you can use more, that. so you can double your order. <laughs> <laughs> My revival is running out of time, but I have one last chance to get you salivating about British plums. Of course, I could eat my plums as they come. 
au naturel. They are so delicious as they are. Or, I could do something quite extraordinary. Very simple. A little shortbread, homemade shortbread, melting and crumbly, then stewed plums on the top, and a beautiful plum sabayon. I can assure you that is something very special. I, th I found the plum to be the most delicious fruit. Tasty, so many ways to cook it, so many ways to accompany it with different spices, different flavors. They go with, they go with savory, they go with sweet, they go raw as they are. So please, must eat your plums, you must, and support these fantastic orchards, okay, all across Great Britain. In this tempting dessert, I'm using two plum varieties, the classic Victoria and the very British Marjorie seedling. I could cook them like that, but I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to macerate them. And, and that's reminds me of my grandma, you know, seeing her you know, just macerating all sorts of different food, like an alchemist okay, in her part of the kitchen. It was such a beautiful scenery to look at. This man, woman knowing so well about food. Mix the plums with sugar and lemon juice. Often the sugar, if you add it at the end, it stays outside. Whereas here, I want the sugar and the lemon to permeate right at the core of this plum to, make, to give you a true plum experience. Then add a dash of plum liqueur. Of course, food has got such a strong connection with memories. Okay, and I always remember my grandfather doing his plum alcohol. In the past, of course, in France, distillating was allowed, was done by everyone. It would be wonderful to see the British you know, growers try to get more licensing, okay, to create their own liqueurs. It takes about one hour for the lemon and sugar to work their magic. Look at this wonderful golden jus. That will add 40% more flavor to the dish, and I say 40%, so it's worth macerating your food before. You add that much more to your experience, okay? Put the plums onto gentle heat. Actually, I'm going to put a tiny little amount of pepper, just to set it up, to lengthen the flavor. Can add a lovely little je ne sais quoi to your dessert. Then cover and simmer. So the heat is slowly, quietly, cooking them very nicely, still firm. Okay, it's not boiling and stewing everything. Okay, because I want the fruit whole enough. It takes just four minutes to create the perfect cooked plum. Oh, look these colors, amazing colors. I can assure you, try it. Try those recipes and you will fall in love back again, all the way back again with plums. I'm serving these plums with a delicate shortbread. Parfait. Then a simple sabayon. And that is seriously good. Whisked egg yolks, sugar, and dessert wine makes a perfect partner for my plums. Top with icing sugar. And then glaze. The final touch, some lovely jus. Now, the reward, okay, the tasting. Let's see. Should I take the marjorie? The, should I take the marjorie seedling here, or should I take that wonderful, beautiful gold Victoria? Ah, oh, God, it's difficult, eh? Okay, let's go for this beautiful Victoria here. Perfect. Oh, soft. It is lovely. It's definitely a dish you must do at home. It's a must. And when you're cooking that little plum dish, not only you are giving lots of joy to your family, but you're also preserving your British plum orchards for future generations. I do believe that local produce in local food can transform communities. So to spread the joy, I've arranged to meet an old friend and give the people of Persho a taste of what their plums are capable of. Persho plum juice, please, for the people. To good health. The revival of the plum. Voila. Oh, yes. Fantastic, eh? It is like champagne. Look at that. Ooh la la. Ladies, thank you very much indeed. 
Welcome. Plum from Persho, please. <laughs> Wonderful. Mm. I think it's fantastic to see the good people of Persho lining, okay, and queuing to have this lovely plum juice. If my revival has captured your imagination, then why not visit the National Food Collection at Brogdale and taste the 350 British plum varieties? Of course, you could always plant a tree and raise a glass of your own homegrown, homemade plum juice, wine or even liquor. It has been an incredible...